Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I can't believe it. They brought us back for another season. Evidently, people love this building resilience stuff. It's awesome. In fact, hey, there's Dan. I gotta go. Welcome back to Building Resilience, a show about extreme climate construction and extremely smart construction and design. Hey, so uh, welcome back. It's season two of Building Resilience. This time we're gonna look at design and construction principles and practice. Resilient construction and design come down to building and remodeling houses that can take a punch from the weather and provide a healthy, comfortable and sustainable living space for the people and pets who live there. And because it's remodeling, nothing is ever a straight line. So we're gonna look at a bunch of different parts and pieces on a couple different projects, including this one right behind me. Pretty traditional stucco house. We see a lot of these. There's a little bit of that Frank Lloyd Wrighty Asian influence going on, some good overhangs. It's got some good bones to it. And at 111 years old, it is a perfect candidate for a healthy renovation. Healthy renovations in the context of resiliency means designing and building for a changing climate that may include more heat, hurricanes, lightning storms that can cause wildfire, tornadoes, flooding, and ice storms. Since season one, we've seen firsthand the importance of a healthy home, but also since season one, the climate zone maps have been updated. This means that some people now find themselves in a different climate zone than yesterday. Most of the jurisdictions move to warmer zones, but some move to colder ones. Minneapolis stayed in the same climate zone, but a few counties to the north moved into warmer zone six. The extreme weather events and changing climate have prompted some big cities to establish their own resilient design guidelines. So DC has their new resilient design principles and in them they look at heat and flooding. Washington DC developed guidelines with the Resilient Design Institute, our source for last year's resilient construction gut checks. Local conditions dictate where the best bang for the buck is and in DC's case it's focusing on extreme heat and three sources of flooding. Well Minneapolis has a lot of trees so we're pretty good when it comes to heat island effect. The houses are going to stay a little cooler. And for flooding, well, we're up at the top of a hill and it goes way, way down below where you're standing right now, down to a creek. So this house isn't gonna flood. And really, when it comes to resilient design, it starts with site selection. And if we have sandy soils and a poured concrete foundation with high elevation, then we can go ahead and check off that first box. As long as we're checking off boxes, let's check around the back of the house to see where that addition is going. Over here on the side, we've got this really cool sunroom uh, with this kind of unfortunate storm window detail. We're going to get rid of that. We're going to have those windows extend up vertically. It's going to look really sharp. We've got that nice little shingle holder up there on the roof. Uh, and then over here where the newer addition was put on the house and there's some issues with how it was built. We'll take a look at those later, but most of that's gonna come down or come apart. Then we're gonna put a second story on it. And rather than match the existing house with its stucco traditional details, we're gonna go in a very different direction. We're gonna look at some new materials. It's gonna be kind of fun and kind of funky. I see we're gonna flaunt those child labor laws again this year too. The soggy addition isn't the only problem with the old house though. There's an unusual crack. We've got this unusual crack running horizontally along the top of this this piece, we've got this section here that's blown out. So back here is this corner bit that's blowing apart. We suspect this downspout with some poor water management was probably the culprit. That's been rectified a little bit with this sort of poor excuse for an extension on the downspout. Um, we've got some homeowner jerry-rigged cable with a definitely not rated for outdoor plug. Uh, and then we have this old equipment here, two condensers, one that powered a mini split, the other that powered the air handler up in the attic. This is all going to get replaced with some really cool new equipment from Mitsubishi. Um, and we're going to be removing the stucco off to right about this location here. And then this is all going to get uh, ASIC cladding. Um, and behind that, some really awesome Benjamin Obdike weather resistant barrier technology. So we're gonna be tearing off the stucco back here. We're gonna pull off all the service equipment and these mechanicals and get those replaced. We're gonna get rid of this window well here because the dryer vent's just blowing lint into it, it's a mess. 
The rest of the stucco is gonna stay. It's in good shape, although someone painted it this color on purpose, I don't know why. Uh, these window wells are gonna remain. Good sandy soils, really good drainage. And uh, that brings us to windows. We're gonna replace all of the windows in the house and we're gonna fill all of those weight pockets with some froth pack from our good friends at DuPont so that the house is nice and efficient. And that seems like a nice and efficient place to cut this opening episode of Building Resilience Season 2 that we're dubbing Project-Based Resilient Remodeling. Next time, we go inside to have a look at what's not going to get deconstructed down here or demolished. We're in the basement, we've got this drop ceiling, and this is not going to be deconstruction. This is going to be demolition. In the process, we'll explore a little bit about what deconstruction is. Basically what we're doing, we're systematically dismantling reusable equipment and appliances. Um, you know, uh, when we do deconstruction, we're taking our time, making sure that we're not damaging anything, you know, or, you know, so it's just ready, you know, so. And how we can check off two boxes instead of one when we go about doing it. In the meantime, stay alert and stay resilient.